One of the key questions that you should be asking yourself all the time is how do I know for sure that my AWS account is secure? And one of the best ways to go about doing that is using a AWS security service called Security Hub to help us check for all of the controls inside the account and see if they are in compliance against the security standards. The second item is likewise to be able to aggregate and to provide us a posture, our security posture across all of our AWS accounts or inside a specific AWS account. So right in front of us, we have AWS Security Hub running right here. So as you can see right here, we have security standards on the left and we have all of the findings that is checked against those resources. Okay, you can see right here, resources with the most failed checks and security standards. And there are three security standards that you can enable inside AWS Security Hub. The first one is called CIS, which stands for Center for Internet Security. All right, and likewise, we have Payment Cut Industry Data Security Standard. And finally, we have AWS Foundational Security Best Practices. So all of this provide us controls, specific controls to check inside of our account to look out for misconfiguration, to look out for compliance against a particular standard or against all of those three standards. And on the right side, you can see all these failed security checks. And as you scroll down further, okay, you can see right here, I'm based out of Singapore. So you can see right here, we have the different types of findings, all right, which are all the security findings that are related to either the resource, to the account, the misconfiguration, and so on. So we have critical, high, medium, and low. So you can see all of that. And this allows us to view, particularly if you're deploying resources across many different regions. So this gives you a bird's eye view, a single dashboard to see what are all these findings across all of these regions. And finally, you can see over here, we have different type of providers, providers of the findings. Provider of findings, meaning that you're using different type of security services, whether they are from AWS or whether they are third party providers. So either way, we're able to send findings over into Security Hub to help us aggregate and consolidate all of these findings into a single dashboard. So you don't have to open up 20, 30 different dashboards in order to do an investigation. And all of these findings can be right there and you can get all these details there and run and begin, right? Kickstarting your investigation process from there. Okay, so of course, the rest of it, like your S3 buckets, your EC2 instances with findings, all right, your EMIs, Amazon machine images, and a lot of different findings you can get very quickly using AWS Security Hub. So let's go ahead and take a look at security standards on the left side. So go ahead and click on it. So right here in front of us, we have three standards to select from. Okay, you can have AWS Foundation of Security Best Practices, you can have CIS AWS Foundation Benchmark, and you can have PCI DSS. So right here, let's go ahead and click on our CIS, which stands for Center for Internet Security. So right in front of us, we can see here, okay? So we have the overall security score, and over here you can see 13 of 43 controls passed. Okay, so here it checks the following. Three, four of five, it checks fail. Okay, so we can highlight over and see, okay, what are the critical checks? What are the high checks and so on and so forth? And you can see here we have the security score, all right, which very quickly give us an idea of how we're compliant against CIS. And as you scroll down further, you can see right here, okay, we have the severity of those different controls that are checked against the accounts. And we have the number of field checks here. Okay, so one of the simple one you can take a look at is for example, the security groups. All right, so security groups are attached to different instances. And this is a stateful firewall that allow us to manage the traffic going in and out of the particular instance. Okay, so you can see right here, ensure no security groups allow ingress from 0.0.0.0 slash zero. So what does this mean? All right, this meant that anyone on the internet can do a secure shell connection, port 22, into the particular instance, and you want to stop that. You want to only allow certain IP addresses and IP address range to be allowed connection into, all right, port 22, which is secure shell connection, because that is very dangerous. And one thing you notice for sure is that the moment you allow port 22 on the internet, very quickly, you start getting secure shell brute force attack. And whichever case is, right, whichever port that you've opened up and it's a common service, chances are you're gonna see all these attempts either by bots, by adversaries, trying to launch a login into your instances. So that's something that you want to take note of, which is why it has severity of high, because you wanna ensure that you can secure those instances from the direct communication or connection to it. So let's go in and click on it. So once you clicked on it, you can see right here, 
Security groups provide stateful filtering of ingress, egress, network traffic to AWS resources. It is recommended and no security group allows unrestricted ingress access to port 22, okay? So there are remediation instructions that you can go in and click on. So if perhaps you're not too particularly familiar with certain parts of AWS, there are always remediation instructions provided to you that can help you do, all right, tightening of the controls inside your account or your resources. So let's go ahead and click on it. All right, so we're opening up a new tab for that. At the same time, all right, as we scroll down further, we can see right here, compliance status failed, all right, and the fail status meant that all of the security groups that we are doing a check on has to pass in order for compliance status to be a pass, okay? So meaning over here, we have the following security groups, okay? So we got we got all this default security group, WordPress certified, and Nginx, and so on. So just one of it, all right, is having a failed compliance status. So you can click onto the EC2 security group right here, and then you can see right here, okay, we have the ID, you can go ahead and click on this and open up a new tab for us. So once you're here, all you gotta do is to go ahead and edit this particular security group, and you'll be able to rectify the issue right here. So let's go ahead and click Edit Inbound Rules, okay? So now instead of having Secure Shell open up to the internet, what I'm gonna do is to go ahead and say, select a particular IP, and in this case, it is going to be my IP address, okay? So once you do so, go ahead and click Save Rules. So now that I've done a Save Rules, it is updated to the security group, or whether you're using it or not, it is going to do a check against it. So now if I go back into Security Hub Console, okay, right here in front of us, what I can do now is to go ahead and click Investigate, and we can click under the configuration timeline or the config rules. So as long as this particular finding or this particular control or check is within the same account, you can click under the configuration timeline and config because beneath it, Security Hub is using a lot of config service to help us, all right, all these config rules to check against all of those resources, all right, to look at any changes to the resource configuration, any changes to the rules of it. Okay, so you can go ahead and click under either configuration timeline or config rules. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on both of them, all right? And it will open up a couple of tabs for us. Okay, so the first one, as you can see here, we have the configuration timeline. So here you can see the following, all right? We have the November 21st, 2021, three non-compliant rule. Okay, you can see right here, SG restricted common ports, all right? We have a restricted RDP. We have a VPC SG open only to authorized ports, restricted secure shell. So we have all these different details right here. And the second one, as you can see here, security hub restricted secure shell, all right? And we have all these resources in scope. Okay, so what you can do now, you can click under actions and you can click under reevaluate and it would check for all of those security groups, all right? And see which one of them allow all right, the internet to be able to run a connection or communication with the secure shell on port 22. So if you scroll down further, all right, so now it may take a while for the configuration to run the check. Okay, so once it is done with the check, as you can see right here, no more evaluation results. You can click onto the drop down, click all of it, and you can see it's a full compliant because we have now done the remediation process for this particular control. Okay, so if I go back over here into another tab, and this tab is the remediation tab for us. So you can see right here, right? This is the remediation instruction. So all of these controls have a remediation instruction for you. So this is fantastic because it saves a lot of time and you are able to follow the step-by-step -step instruction to help secure your account, secure your resources, just by following the instructions right here. Going back to Security Hub, the next thing we want to do is to go over into Insights. Okay, so Insights provide us details, graphs, of how we want to look out for specific resources or to drill down more details into a particular account or a different kind of findings, but we want to group them together to give us an idea of what's going on inside the resource or inside the account or inside those findings. So what we can do now, as you can see right here, we have several insights. So if you go ahead and say click under AWS resources with the most findings, you go ahead and click on it. Okay, so right here you can see the following. We have the workflow status, all right, which is new, notify, all right, the record state is active, and we have a group by resource ID. Okay, so here it states the following. These are the resources that we have that's having a lot of findings. Okay, so if you go ahead and click on to say a particular, in this case, an account ID, let's click on it, and it will show us all of the findings in relation to this particular account. Okay, so again, we're all using 
the filter function that's available here. So we're adding filters to help give us more specific insights. All right, so you can see right here, okay, we have the resources data account. We have the log filter metric. All right, alarm should exist for usage of the root user and show a log metric filter. And you can go ahead and click onto any of them. So let's say we click onto one of them over here and you can see the following, right? This control checks for the CloudWatch metric filters using the following pattern, okay? And you can see the workflow status, the compliance status. We can open up and see the resource that is in question. Okay, we have the region, we have the ID and the resource type. So all these details are right here for us. And you can even see it in the JSON format by clicking onto the finding ID. So once you clicked on it over here, you can see, all right, the finding JSON for us. So this is particularly useful if you are going to be using EventBridge to be able to give you more automation, all right? So if we manage to capture a particular type of event pattern, we'll be able to use this finding JSON to help us do those filtering, all right? So that we're more precise in our response against different kinds of findings. So likewise, all right, next up are the findings that we can take a look at. So findings are literally all of those checks, all of those security detection that is coming in into our environment. And we can filter them by products. We can filter them by all the different type of integrations that you may be having, different type of AWS security services. They're sending data over into Security Hub. Well, likewise, taking a look at those security standards that we have enabled earlier and is generating findings for us. So in this case, you can see the following. We have the product of Security Hub, okay? And you can see right here, we have the compliance status and we have the updated that. So this was the last check that was done against this particular control. Okay, so you can see right here, we have EC2 instances should be managed by AWS Systems Manager, all right? So you tell us a particular instance that is not being managed and you can click onto the title link you can see the rules that are being run or used as part of the check. You can see all of the details of the account ID, the severity level, the resources that you have. So you can always click onto the plus sign here and a plus sign will help us do a further filter. So if I go ahead and click under say, for example, resource type, AWS EC2 instance, I click onto the plus sign here, which does a filter for us. If I go ahead and close the finding, you can see now we have an additional filter, which is resource type. AWS EC2 instance. So what this does for us is that all of the findings now has to do with EC2 instances. Okay, so to be able to see the different findings, all right, tag different kind of EC2 instances that we're having right here. And finally, going to integrations, all right, under integrations, this is the place where you can enable Security Hub to send findings over to a particular service or for a service to begin sending findings to Security Hub and Security Hub can accept it so that you can begin seeing all these findings within Security Hub as your posture management, giving you insight into the current security posture. So if I scroll down further, all right, you can see here we have audit manager, a chatbot, we have Firewall Manager. So as I scroll down further, all right, we have Gut Duty. So Gut Duty is a threat detection service for us on AWS. You can go in and click under C Findings. So once I click under C Findings, you can see right here, okay, we have the following. We have an access key, all right, we have title. I described metric filters was invoked at using root credentials. List server certificates was invoked at using root credentials. So again, we are able to see all these details here because Gut Duty as a threat detection service detected those findings and forwarded or sent them over in Security Hub and it's been consolidated, being aggregated over there. So you can look out specifically for certain resource type. Okay, so this will be a fantastic way for us to begin looking, okay, what are all the findings in relation to an account? What are all the findings in relation to an instance? So this is a particularly common use case that we can use as part of running and checking against resources to ensure they're tightened, or they're secure, and then we're able to run our workloads on it. So there you go. We were able to check against all our accounts, all our resources using AWS Security Hub to check whether our accounts and our resources are compliant against certain security standards and what are some of the threat detection services that you may have enabled and they can send all these findings over into AWS Security Hub so that you have a score against your accounts or right, against your resources so that you can protect and tighten them using remediation instructions provided. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and we'll try our best to answer any of your questions. So if you like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorials. Thank you so much once again for watching.